Hey folks, welcome. Here we discuss real stories by real people. Today we have the story of a man whose girlfriend had a one night stand. Let's see how it goes. This happened last week and I just need an opinion if I went too far. I've been dating my now ex-girlfriend for two years. Last week she attended a party at her workplace to which I was told partners were not invited. I'm a trusting individual and I didn't mind her going out and doing her own thing without me there. One of my colleagues at work is married to a woman who works with my girlfriend. At around 9 p.m., he FaceTimed me and showed me my girlfriend kissing a guy passionately on the dance floor and later heading out with the same guy. I was mortified and tried calling her, but she wouldn't answer. I drove to her place, we don't live together, and caught her being dropped off by an unknown vehicle at 1 a.m., which I guess belonged to the guy. She had spent four hours alone with a mystery guy and I had no idea what happened. The following day, she called as if she hadn't just come in from screwing a random dude. I asked her if she had a fun time with the guy she left the party with. She sounded like she choked at that. She tried to play it off and kept denying she went anywhere. That he was just a colleague who gave her a lift and I'm insecure for assuming the worst of her. I shut her down and told her I was in front of her place last night and saw her getting dropped by him after midnight. She immediately started making excuses. I was drunk and we didn't have sex, we just talked. I wasn't thinking right, etc. I told her I wasn't interested and we were done. I told her to come and pick the stuff up she's left around my place and to give my things back to me. She started pleading with me to give her another chance, but I ignored her. She kept texting me that if I loved her half as much as I claim, I'd be able to look past this. Now, here's where I might be the a-hole. She relied heavily on her parents financially because she had a lot of debt. Her parents were covering her rent and other expenses while she used majority of her salary to pay off the debt. So I called her stepfather and told him of what happened and that I've ended things with her. Her stepfather hates cheaters because his first marriage ended in cheating, so he went mad. He removed his financial assistance and told her to go to hell, basically. I know this because my ex called me and ripped me a new one how I've ruined her life. Her friends keep texting me and berating me for being vindictive. From my point of view, I feel like I had every right to handle things the way I see fit considering how she didn't respect our relationship. But I'd really like an opinion. Am I an a-hole? Now for some comments. You're the a-hole. Breaking up with her was completely justified given what happened. But calling her stepfather and getting her cut off financially was vindictive and unnecessary. You escalated the situation in a way that was meant to punish her beyond the relationship ending. It's understandable to be hurt and angry, but this was taking it too far. You're the a-hole. It's one thing to break up with her for cheating, but it's another thing to intentionally ruin her financial stability. You had every right to end the relationship, but calling her stepfather and causing her to lose financial support was a spiteful move. You didn't need to involve her family and make her life even harder than it already was. How did you write all that and not realize you're the a-hole? You were right to break up with her if she cheated, but going out of your way to get her financial support pulled was shitty as frick. It seems like you wanted to hurt her as much as possible, which isn't a healthy or mature way to handle the situation. You should have just ended things and moved on instead of trying to destroy your life. Story 2 I, 35 female, married my husband, 56 male, five years ago and his family has been awful to me and our son seven male because i was the other woman his ex-wife dragged him through a two-year-long contentious divorce and got the house pretty much everything he owned except his business and an exorbitant amount of child support i did give birth while he was married to his ex but they were separated and filing for a divorce they had three children together, Junior, 24 male, Eve, 22 female, and Kate, 16 female. The older two do not acknowledge me. Kate is not rude because she generally stays with us every other weekend, but she will not talk to me if she can avoid it. Our seven-year-old Brady has cerebral palsy and is non-verbal and non-mobile, so they use that as an excuse not to develop a relationship with him at all. My husband was very close with Junior before we got together, and they used to do typical father-son things. After his parents' divorce, Junior grew distant and went away to college, and my son will never be able to do the bonding things my husband wants. 
Eve is engaged and stated that she does not want my husband to walk her down the aisle because he doesn't respect the covenant of marriage. She also made it clear I'm not invited to the wedding. My husband's parents and sister are religious and do not approve of the adultery, the divorce, or my having his child out of wedlock. When my father-in-law passed, he left his other grandchildren six-figure inheritances on top of their college funds and left my son and husband just enough that we couldn't contest the will. We recently found out that the whole family does Zoom nights and exclude us. We recently had an argument about his family and how they treat my son as less than equal. I said that I'm done with them and his children. I'm tired of watching my husband's heart break and I want him to stop begging his family to forgive him for a choice we made to be happy together. My husband said I was an asshole and he can't just give up his kids to make me happy. So am I the a-hole? Edit. I'm not worried about my husband's inheritance. However, our son requires a high level of care and frequently has medical issues. I won't be around forever to take care of him, and we could have used the financial assistance more than his siblings and cousins long term. For my husband to have four kids and three of them receive around $700,000 each and one received $3,000 is extremely unfair. Except for your son, who is innocent in all this, I'd say you and your husband got exactly what you deserved. You aren't entitled to an inheritance. Your child is your responsibility. You shattered their family, and now multiple people will endure lifelong pain and trauma because of the damage you and your husband inflicted. In their eyes, you'll always be the bad guy. And they're right. You are the bad guy. Why in the hell would you ever think they'll let you get your hands on their money after the disaster you caused? I hope screwing a married man was worth it. Now for some comments. How could you possibly not be the arsehole in this situation? You got involved with a married man with three kids. Of course they dislike you. It's highly likely the youngest just doesn't want to lose her father and simply tolerates you. How dare you think they owe you kinship and respect? You offered no respect to their mother and your husband, even more awfully. Cheated on the mother of his children with someone half his age. Ugh. Your entitlement is revolting, and he absolutely deserves the treatment he is getting. You made your bed. You get to lie in it. You were the other woman and is also 20 years younger than him, closer in age to his kids. I don't care how awful a marriage is, it doesn't justify an affair. Also, you have a 7-year-old son, but you've been married for 5 years. Does that mean you got pregnant when your husband was still married? Have you tried to build some kind of bond relationship with his family and kids? Whatever the case, I understand his older children's anger. The only one I feel bad for is your son. He deserves better, but you don't. You're the a-hole. Big time. You have no high ground to stand on here. You had an affair with a married man and a child with him while he was married to someone else. From a religious standpoint, his family is truly holier than thou. From a secular standpoint, you are free to dissociate with your husband's first family, and you should. However, your husband is free to make his own choices. You have no rights to make any demands of anyone other than your husband, and then only that he provide care for the son you had together. Story 3 when I moved in with my girlfriend, she had just graduated with a master's in accounting and was working as a public accountant. I moved in after being with her for two weeks. At the time, I was coming out of a divorce and I was afraid of being alone. That's why I rushed in. Before I moved in, she told me about her $80,000 in debt. She was making $60,000 a year. I stepped up and said I would pay the rent and utilities so that she would have the extra money to pay her debt down. It's 30 months later now. She quit her job 10 months ago because she didn't like the workload or the people she worked for. She wanted to get a CPA to make more money, she said, and she wanted to quit so that she could have more time to study for the exam. I supported her decision. Then she did not study very hard, took one part, failed, and decided to get a new job. She interviewed a few times. Then she decided to stop looking for work. Just told me one day she doesn't want to work. Now, I'm told, as a man, I need to take care of all the money things. Her college debts are my problem now. She refuses to work. She might try to make some money sewing. She says I need to support her. 
She tells me it's only a thousand dollars a month more and that I don't know how to spend my money and that she should manage my cash flow. She says her loan problem is a man's problem. I just need to make more money. I'm feeling used. Boundaries violated. I think I should leave? Update. First off, thank you people of Reddit. You spoke with a unified voice. Your message was loud and clear and I am looking for a new place faster than I was before. I'm gonna take time to live the single life. Read more, meditate, water fast, work out, eat vegan, make more money, and in time, try again. How can you be with someone who's not only lazy, but also dumps all the financial responsibilities on you? That's a dead weight. That debt is hers, and you shouldn't pay a cent of it. I get covering household expenses for a short period while she finds a job, but I have no respect for people who have a good education and do nothing with it. It's infuriating. Everybody has to make it on their own, but some people are just born freeloaders. Now for some comments. Dude, why are you asking this question? You already know the answer. She's chipping away at you seeing how much she can get away with before you figure out she's making a sucker out of you. Please realize the respect you deserve and the respect she's refusing to show you and pack your stuff and get out of there. Is this the life you want? She's quit her job and run away from all her responsibilities. Who's to say she won't run away from you once you pay off her $80,000? Are you being serious when you say you don't know what to do or which way to go on this? Or do you just want Reddit to confirm your inclination to leave? If you're really such a glutton for punishment, then I think the best way here is to pay off her loans, marry her, then let her divorce you, and take half of everything your first wife didn't already take.